My name is Doc Blakely, and the first question that most people ask is, is that your real name? And yes, it is my real name. And the second question people ask is, what kind of a mother would name her son Doc? Well, it wasn't my mother, it was my father. He was a fan of gunfighters, and I was named after the legendary gunfighter Doc Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> Hello, is this on? <laughs> Doc Holliday, exactly. Uh, I've had trouble with that name all my life. It is my middle name, but it's my real name. My older brother and I, Wyatt Earp Blakely, <laughs> had problems with those names when we were growing up because my family was sharecroppers and we moved to a different school system virtually every year. And every year we'd come into the new school system, me and my brother, school teacher would come out, usually a female teacher, pretty nice and sweet, and she'd say, hi, boys, welcome to our school system. What's your name? And I'd say, Doc. She said, don't get smart with me. I've got to know what your real name is. Who's this, your brother? What's his name? I'd say, trust me, lady, if you don't believe me, <laughs> you ain't going to believe him. Because <laughs> he insisted on going by his middle name, too, Erp. She'd usually say something like, oh, what a calamity. I'd say, now you leave our little sister out of this. <laughs> well, I walk into the local livestock and to the local liquor store there, and I had my cowboy hat on, my round can of snuff in the right hip pocket, bandana around, my spurs, jeans, whole works. And I walk in there and I said, ma'am, I'd like to buy a fifth of the cheapest rot gut whiskey you got in this establishment. She said, oh, sir, I don't think a man of your stature in the community wants that. Probably what you want is Jack Daniels or Jim Beam. I said, no, ma'am, this, this ain't for me. This is for my cow. She said, uh-huh. Finally decides to sell me a fifth of the cheapest rot gut in the liquor store. I go out to the ranch. This old cow is laying up under the shed there. And as I approach her, with this bottle of whiskey, she starts hooking at me with those horns. I try to get a little of it in her mouth, and she's hooking at me with horns. You see, cows are a lot like Baptists. They don't think they like whiskey at first taste. <laughs> get out of the habit of being critical even of yourself. You guys, in the morning, get up, flex those muscles, look into that mirror, and say to yourself, Eat your heart out, Tom Cruise. <laughs> and you ladies look into that mirror early in the morning and say, Jennifer Lopez, you poor, pathetic, flat-busted, sorry excuse for a full-figured woman. <laughs> so you've gained a little weight. Big deal. Get yourself one of those T-shirts that says, I beat anorexia. I am a friend of both Charlie Serengo and Charlie's an old friend of mine. Hey, play one for Charlie. Ooh. How about a big round of applause for Doc Blakely on the mandolin? Just the way Charlie likes it. Now Charlie Serengo was 51 years old, summer of 1906. After 22 years as a cowboy detective, he figured he'd just call it quits. Now old Charlie understood he needed livelihood, couldn't get by on his looks. So Charlie remembered his Wild West adventures and wrote them all down in his books. And now Charlie Serengo, he loved the Fandango, no one could argue with that. He'd ride in a minute for the pure glory in it, and he'd fight at the drop of a hat. That wild Texas gringo, Charlie Serengo, he rounded him up mighty fine. I am a friend of both Charlie Serengo And Charlie's an old friend of mine That's why I'm a friend of both Charlie Serengo Charlie's an old friend of mine
mind. 